Welcome back to Sea Glass Archaeology, everybody. It's a beautiful day in December, and we're back out on the beach. We're in Tablehead one more time. We're looking for some more sea glass. I'm so excited to be here right now. You know, I can't get down to my beach till the waves are pushing up really, really high. And the waves are actually pushing up really, really high here as well. But I can't say no to adventure, and I'm so happy to be back out here. So let's go see what we find. Take a look at this find, everybody. This might be the most gnarly piece of sea glass that I've ever seen in my life. It's absolutely a piece of clear, but you can see that it's got iron staining all over it. Really, really thick as well. Check out this beautiful little shade of purple over here. It's a nice soft little lavender glow. Look at this everybody right over here. It's a secret piece of black glass. I gotta be careful, the waves are coming. <laughs> okay, the waves were close. But check this one out over here. We hold it up. It's a green olive. But a few people have walked this spot today, so I'm just glad that they missed this piece right over here. Check out this really unique ceramic, everybody. The surf is just pounding in. This is a pattern I haven't seen before. I'm getting soaked here. You're gonna see the waves are just gonna build up here. There's one. Here comes the next one because the water is coming right up to where we are picking and there's not many places to pick on the beach. Although I can see right over here, look at that beautiful shard. Oh my God, and there's another one right over here. Look at this beautiful shard right over here. I gotta pick it before the water comes and takes me away, let alone the sea glass. Okay, everyone, so check this out. I just got super soaked. I was picking, I found a tiny speck of red, which I now lost because my friend Karen found this beautiful marble right here and it was right next to where I was picking sitting on the surface. So somewhere over here, there's a tiny little speck of red. Be on the lookout for a tiny little speck of red, everybody. Let's see if we can find it. I think the odds are gonna be absolutely zero that I recover it, but I'm so happy for Karen that she just found that little marble. We can see that it's the imprint of a leaf from a Carboniferous era fossil. And as we've talked about in the past, Cape Breton has so much coal from these old Carboniferous era forests that existed out here 280 to 330 million years old. Coming across beautiful fossils like this on my beach walks definitely helps keep life in perspective. It always makes me appreciate the little things and especially my children and every memory that I'm making with them. So let's get out there everybody and see what else we can find. Things are getting pretty violent over here everybody with respect to the waves. But judging by all these pieces in my head, this is right where my friend Karen just found that marble. This is absolutely the place to be and the place to stay. I'm pretty sure that more stuff is about to kick up if I just stay right here and keep on kicking. I'm actually pretty sure that I saw a marble right over here not too long ago, but then a big wave came and I had to jump out of the way. Well, these violent waves are not joking around everybody. We're picking the same spot and check this out. I just found this piece, this beautiful green, and right over here where I was picking not too long ago, there's a marble. This definitely makes up for that red that I lost, that tiny little speck I was talking about earlier. Let's take a look at it over here. Uh, it's got some nice turquoise, some red and some white, and it looks really, really pitted as well. I'm so glad that I'm staying right over here where all these waves are just pushing up because they definitely seem to be turning all of these beautiful pebbles up and down all around and giving me some beautiful finds. Like this one right here, and then another one right over here. And it's wild because like I said, I've been here for about 25 minutes picking in this exact same spot, and I just keep finding more and more stuff as the beach keeps cycling. There's another one right over here. Can I grab it? Oh, it's getting away from me. There it is. Okay, I'm gonna get these all in the bag, everybody. All these beautiful little finds. Although, maybe, let's just keep filming here a little bit more. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, look at this right over here. Look at that. I still have all the other pieces in my hand and it's a super old piece of olive green. Well, maybe it's not that super old because it actually is a little bit more green than it is yellow. But look at this piece right over here. It's another secret black find sitting right over here in Tablehead. Happy, happy. Nice little tiny blue here, everybody. So as you can probably tell, I'm far away from the shoreline right now. I'm at the high tide mark, a very high tide mark, about 20 feet from the cliffs. 
and there's a lot of rocks over here that are pretty small. So I'm gonna sit here. Oh, here's another blue. I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna pick through them for a little bit and I'm gonna let it cycle down below. And then hopefully when we go back, there's gonna be some more good pieces just sitting on the surface. Check out this beautiful piece of bonfire glass, everybody. You can see that it's got the Kelly green, then it's got some clear, it's got some black ash from the fire, and then it's smoothed down to perfection in the ocean for me to find. Check out this amazing find over here, everybody. At first, I just thought it was a shade of green, but then upon further investigation, you can see this little groove right over here. This is unequivocally the bottom of an old insulator, and it actually has a little air bubble in it over here, which is also a great indicator that this is a piece of antique glass, and it was made before the automation process. I think when we go home, I'm gonna take this piece and I'm gonna put it up to an insulator and we're gonna match it up. Now look at this one over here. We got a sassy top from a bottle lip. Over here on the flip side, we can see that there's no little groove where this would have received a cork or a stopper. So this might be a little bit more modern, but it is a nice little shade and it is unequivocally the top of a bottle. Now take a look at this beautiful golden honey amber piece of sea glass. It's absolutely aged to perfection. And when I put this piece next to it, ooh, the waves are coming in. This is a standard color. This is the one that I just found. I wouldn't go as far as calling this orange, but I'd call this a golden honey amber shade of sea glass. And it's so well aged. I'm so glad I'm still digging here. So here's the situation, everybody. I'm just sitting on my knees and sifting through all of the pebbles right where the water cannot get me. I'm making a lot of finds, but not too many amazing finds that I'm able to share with you. And on top of that, it's a little bit too windy and a little bit too violent out for me to set this camera down. I tried a few times to put it out so I could film myself just digging, but unfortunately, it just keeps getting knocked over. That's okay though, we're still having a great time and I'll keep reporting back anything that I find. You know, sea glass is just formed in such random shapes and sizes. I don't know what the odds are that we would come across two identical shards of amber brown, almost perfect for earrings, one on top of another, but that's what just happened right over here. They're not the same shade, but they're definitely the same size. Ooh, let's get out of here. <laughs> this is so not cool, but this is exactly what I was talking about in the last video. You can see that somebody obviously bought some new pillows they're done with their laundry detergent, their milk as well. This definitely makes up for that tiny little red that I lost earlier, everybody. Check this out. It is the tiniest little fragment from what I'm hypothesizing was a sea marble. It's probably about two millimeter by one millimeter. Here, let's see if we can flip it over. We can see it's got a little bit of that streaking from a blue marble and that's all that's left. Whoa, I'm getting wet here. Holy cow. Okay, so here it is. And it's the tiniest little fragment. Oh, right over there, you can almost, oh my God. Okay, everybody, I don't know if I still have it anymore, but I just got soaking wet and that is not fun. No, it's gone. It's gone. I only have the heart piece. <laughs> well, I guess I just learned my lesson that maybe I need to move a little higher when I make a nice find. Although maybe I got lucky and maybe it ended up somewhere in the bag, the wave pushed it right in. Let's take a quick look here and see if we can find it again. But I am absolutely wet now. That totally soaked my legs. I'm on my knees, and I really hope I didn't lose that because I was just saying that made up for the red that I lost. And now the ocean just took a second piece away from me. Oh, it's coming right back again. That is unbelievable. I can't believe I just did that. I really hope you're in there. So now I'm wet, everybody, and I'm gonna go check out this pile right over here. You can see the pile has just been sloshed back and forth by the waves. That's where I was just sitting about an hour ago. We're going to go check it out again. I'm really hoping that something else is pushed up here. Oh, look at this right over here. It's not the nicest piece, but it's a nice color. Let's keep on looking here. Oh, look at this. There's a penny. Oh my gosh. Check this out right over here. It's an old copper penny. I'm imagining it's a copper penny because it doesn't look that old. Oh, and then look right over here. Oh my gosh. This is a piece of red, everybody. Let me get the focus going. Nice. 
This is a super, oh my gosh, I gotta get out of here, hold on. Hold on, let me get this green, and let me get out of the line of fire here, everybody, because this is crazy. Oh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Look at that. I was a second away from not only getting that wave all, I was a second away from not only getting that wave all over me, but I totally would not have found this piece of red and this penny right over here. I think I gotta wait for the water to slow down because it's pretty loud. Take a look, everyone. I know that it is super blurry, but you can see that this is an awesome red. Look at what Karen just found, everybody. Check this out. I can't believe I just found this red and now a marble just washed up and we're in the line of fire. So you take that and let's get out of here. So here it is. Oh, oh my God. I dropped it. I just dropped that piece of red, everybody, and I am not gonna find it. I cannot believe this just happened to me. I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna look as quick as I can. It bounced this way, I think. Oh my goodness. This is absolutely not my day. You know, everybody, everybody always sees pieces of sea glass on my videos when they're done. Please tell me if you see the red right now. Send me a message, because I am not gonna find it. So I've been looking for about 20 minutes here since I dropped that piece of red to no avail so unfortunately I think I'm just gonna have to give up and keep on going because I haven't picked a single shard I just keep walking over my steps over and over again and it looks like somebody else is gonna find that beautiful red so if you found it out here on Tablehead make sure you leave a comment down below and let me know that you found it that was an absolutely beautiful dark piece of red and I cannot believe it's not coming home with me it just hasn't been my luck today. I am still looking for that red piece, everybody. I just can't get over it. But look at what I just found over here. It looks like it's a piece of melt glass and it's got a little bit of purple on it as well. The melt glass itself actually looks like it's a little purple, but it's really hard to tell in the camera. It's not that easy to tell everybody, but right over here, we have another black piece of sea glass. I'm really glad that I just found this piece, everybody, because over my years of observing glass and its history, I've come to learn that the yellow black glass is typically older than the green black glass. So this piece over here is on the yellow shade, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the two pieces that we found today, and we're gonna put them right next to each other into the light, and you're gonna see the difference between the two. When looking at these two pieces on the ground, it almost looks like this one would be older because it's most certainly darker upon appearance. But then when we put them in the light, we can see that they are two very different shades. So there we have it, everybody. Here are the two different shades of the black glass that we found today. Now the one on the left is definitely a greener black olive. So that one's probably from the 1800s. But the one on the left, which is kind of a yellowish black, that one there is probably from the 1700s or early 1800s. And that's the color shade that I've observed in glass from that time period. We can see right over here that it's an embossed letter and it definitely looks like a K. Now, judging by the color of this and the shape, I'm gonna imagine that this is an early century soda water bottle, like a local bottle that maybe I have a match to at home, but I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to go home Maybe this is a McKinley. I know that McKinley and Ogilvy was a company locally that produced a lot of bottles. So maybe I'm gonna take a look and this is gonna to match to an old McKinley bottle. Okay, everyone, so we're back home. I'm starting to get nice and warm and it's time for the official weigh-in and the official spill out onto a tray. Now this is gonna be a lot less than you're used to seeing when we go to the beach because I really spent about an hour just walking over my steps looking for that beautiful piece of red to no avail. 532 grams, a pound and three ounces is still pretty good. So I'm excited to see if that piece of the marble fragment is gonna be in there. But I know that that red is not gonna be in there because I absolutely heard it hitting the ground. So I haven't even given it a rinse yet. We're gonna pour it right out onto the tray and it's still fresh from the beach. You can smell the salt. That beautiful tiny marble fragment was just so bright and blue. It should be easy to spot amongst this 500 plus grams of sea glass that we picked off the beach because there really isn't too much color to it. Right away we can see that it is not here and that is okay. You know, over the last 14 years, I've made so many amazing and significant discoveries on the shoreline. I'm not gonna let this one get to me. And of course, I forgot to add three fragments of spark plugs 
course, I'm always picking spark plugs. So just as we were walking off the beach, we found this piece right over here. Now it's not the best age, but right away I recognized it as a piece from a bottle that's a local bottle that was probably made about 120 years ago. You can see it almost has a little bit of a fragment of the letter C, so I'd imagine it would be CB for Cape Breton. And then when we look on the bottom, you can see these lines over here, these early century mold markings. And on the bottom of my bottles, you can almost see the identical markings. I was almost certain when Karen and I parted ways that this piece right over here with the embossed K on it was headed home in her collection. After all, it's the first letter of her name. I was almost certain that I gave it to her. So the next time I see you, this is coming your way, Karen, and I'm sorry that it's not with you right now. Now, the good news is that I was able, or at least I thought I was able, to match it to the McKinley bottle. So you can see right over here, this piece, it has the beautiful K on it, and it's got the same pronunciation on it that this piece has over here. We can kind of see how it kicks up a lot more, and over here it kicks up in the exact same manner. At first impression, I was certain that I had the match with the K and the K, and then I gave it a little bit more of an investigation, and I realized that this piece right over here has a little bit of a curvature to it on this side. So while the K perfectly matches to the bottom, it isn't from the bottom of the bottle. It has to be from the side of the bottle on the wall similar to this. It's a little bit too small. Luckily for me, I have one more bottle. This one's McKinley and Ogilvy as opposed to McKinley and Sons, and it has a K on it as well. So what we're gonna do now, I'm doing this on the fly, everybody. So we're gonna take this bottle and then we're gonna take the letter K and we're gonna see if these two absolutely match or they're very close. So it almost appears that this K is slightly too large to go on this bottle. And it also doesn't look like the next letter over here is an S, although I could be wrong with that one over here. So I know without a doubt that this piece actually does originate from one of these soda bottles that was made locally around the turn of the century. So we're talking about 1900 to 1910. And you can see I have a third one over here, my favorite bottle with the firefighter climbing the ladder. It has a K on it as well, but this K may or may not match. So let's take a look on this one over here. As I said, I'm doing all of this on the fly. So the K is slightly larger than we would expect to see if it was gonna be a perfect match to this bottle over here. We don't have the smoking gun match, but we do know enough about glass history and we've studied enough local bottles to know that this is a shard that originated from one of these soda water bottles that's probably about 115 to 120 years old. You know, this little gap right over here might go mistaken as just an anomaly in the glass, but I recognize these little bumps over here as being the bottom of an old Heming Gray insulator. You can see that the gaps are very, very narrow in between. There's a very small space, and this piece right over here unequivocally matches to right on the bottom. I also wanted to mention that the little glass beading on the bottom of this insulator wasn't part of the original patent design. However, it was added to help and draw the water away from these insulators that spent so much time out in the weather. So that's exactly how I was able to recognize that this piece right over here had that little beading and that's where it came from. Making these videos brings me so much joy. I really wish that I could send one of my beautiful suncatcher creations to every single one of you watching and a whole bunch of suncatchers to every single person that comments, but unfortunately that's just not feasible. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the comments from the last video, put them all into a random number generator, and I'm gonna give away a couple of sea glass suncatchers. I have all the comments placed over here in the right hand side and I put them in order from the first to the last. We have 33. I wish I could give all 33 of you a sun catcher, but I'm only gonna be giving away two at this point. Here we go, everyone, let's see what happens. Oh, number five, who's gonna be number five here? Five is gonna be Beachcombing Beauty. Oh, you're always so nice to me, so thank you so much. I'm so happy to see that you won. Okay, let's go again. 24, let's see who it's gonna be, who's 24? 24 is going to be Linda. Oh, Linda, thank you so much for your kind words as well. Now be on the lookout. I'm going to be commenting on your comment to let you know how to get a hold of me. I'm not done sharing the love, everybody. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all of the comments off of this video. And at the end of my next beachcombing video adventure, we're going to put all of those into the same random number generator. And I'm going to give away a couple of more sun catchers. Overall, I am so satisfied with this nice haul of sea glass. I know it's a lot less than we're used to picking, but considering how early winter came out in Cape Breton Island, every single piece is an absolute score. 
You know, just getting out there and having the adventure was a victory in itself. Sometimes we sit at home and we just wonder what's out there. And you know what? We're never going to find out unless we put on our shoes and we take that first step towards adventure and to trying something new. Well, everyone, that's going to be about it for this installment of Sea Glass Archaeology. I really hope that you enjoyed the video, all of the finds, even though I lost quite a few of them, and the information that I share along the way. It means the world to me to connect with everybody from around the world and read all of the kind, positive comments. So be sure to leave one down below. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it and be sure to subscribe as well so that you don't miss any more of my adventures or my how-to videos. Thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully we're back out on the beach again real soon.